Let's talk about exponents and logs for five minutes. Consider this function f of x equals 2 to the x. This is an exponential function, where we get a result after we put the input into the exponent. The exponential function and the log function are inverses. Therefore, the log is the exponent here. If we actually put in the result, this f of x, we think about y equaling 2x. If we think about putting in this result as the argument of the log with the same base, then we will end up with the exponent. Now, the reason why this is a y here and not an x anymore is that this is the result that we want, which is that original exponent. You should be familiar with the laws of logarithms. Log a plus log b is equal to log a times b. Log a minus log b is equal to log a divided by b. Remember that, that in order to use these rules, the coefficient must be 1. So for example, this has to be 1 log 4. If this was 2 log 4, we'd have to either split it or use a different rule. The power rule here is this coefficient of the log can become now the exponent inside the argument. The coefficient of a single log here can become the exponent in this argument. So here's the example. 3 log 2 is equal to log 2 cubed. Log of any base with the argument 1 is equal to 0. You can see log base x of 1 is equal to 0, log base b of 1, log base 7 of 1, it all equals 0, because anything to the exponent, 0 is equal to 1. Now remember, log is an exponent, essentially. So here, when we take a look at log base z of z, we're saying, what exponent do I have to put on z to get z? And that's equal to 1. Or we can see that we can convert to exponential form. z to the 1 is equal to this argument. So log base 3 of 3 is equal to 1. This one's a little bit harder to see, but let's take a look at the exponent of z in this case. Here it says log base z of c. So it means the exponent that I have to use on z to get c and then look where it is. It actually is the exponent on z. So the result will be c. So when you see this, this 4 to the log base 4 of the argument, 6, is going to equal 6. Be also familiar with the exponential laws. You can see that there's a corresponding log rule. But here you can think of them, the product of two powers with the same base is the power with the same base and the adding of the exponents. A division or a quotient of powers is the same base with the exponents subtracted, a minus b. Here, there's power rule here. And of course, these, these log rules are on our formula sheet, so you can take a look at those. Now, exponential form and logarithmic form, in order to solve equations, we're going to have to be able to convert between the two. So I like using a simple example, 100 equals 10 squared, which means in log form that log base 10 of the argument 100 is equal to that exponent 2. So 10 to the exponent 2 is equal to 100. Some things to remember, the square root of x is equal to x to the half, so you may see that, and vice versa. If you have 1 half log x, that's going to be equal to log x to the 1 half, or in other words, it might look like this log the square root of x. Change of base formula is also important. We have something in a different base and we want to convert it. For example, we have log base 2 of 5, but we want to change it to log base 10. We're going to say it's log base 10 of the argument divided by log base 10 of the former base. So log base 2 of 5 is equal to log base 10 of 5 divided by log base 10 of 2. As transformations are very important to our understanding, we can see here very quickly that the exponential function, this exponential function, exponential growth function here, is the inverse of the log function in red. So I have it on this side, the exponential function, this is the exponential growth function, an exponential decay function will go like this, but here is the log function. So this is y is equal to 2 to the x, where if x was 1, it would become 2, if x was 2, it'd be 2 squared, which is 4. The log function, this is y is equal to log base 2 of x. This x is an input, a general input, so we're saying if the argument was, say, 4, the exponent I would have to put on 2 would have to be 2. If this input was 8, then the exponent I'd have to put on this base 2 would be 3. Now remember with inverses, the domain and the range will interchange spots. And you can see here, the domain of the exponential function is x is any real number. The range of the exponential function is y is positive number, real number. The asymptote is the x-axis, y equals 0. But you can see with the log function, because of this characteristic of inverse, then the original range becomes characteristic of the domain. x is now, x equals 0 is now an asymptote, and its x values are only positive, and the y values, you can get any y value, any real number. Again, transformations understand, if you replace x with x minus h, say x minus 2, then it moves two units to the right, which means that it also changes the asymptote. And here, this vertical translations, uh, k is vertical translations, h has to do with horizontal translations. And again, in some cases, these translations will move the asym asymptote. Simplifying log expressions. Remember that the coefficient must be 1 in order to use that addition and subtraction rule, and so you'll have to convert first. Taking a look at this, 2 log base 2 of 16. This 2 in front is an issue. We're going to have to use the power rule to bring it to an exponent in the argument. So this is log base 2 of 16 squared plus log 2 of 4. And now we can combine using the addition rule. So this is now log of 16 squared times 4, base 2. And let's convert here. This is going to be equal to log base 2, 2 to the 4. This is 2 to the 8. And then we have 2 to the 2. So this is equal to log base 2 of 2 to the 10, which here is equal to 10. You also have to be careful because this log x times log x has no shortcut. There's no shortcut formula for that. And also remember that exponent rules are still exponent rules. So you might have a log in the exponent, but remember that powers multiplied by powers with the same base, you add the exponent. So here, this 3 log x times 3 to the exponent log x. Um, this log x is added to this log x according to the exponent rule. So this is 3 to the 2 log x, or in other words, using that power of logs is 3 to the log of x squared. If we're solving exponential equations, we're going to look for a common base, and that's probably the easiest. Once we can convert one side to a common base and the other side to the common base, then we can notice that they are the same base, and therefore, since the bases are equal of this one term equaling this other one term, then the exponents will be equal. So 10 to the n plus 1, we wrote 1000 as 10 cubed, 
n plus 1 then is equal to 3, since bases are equal, exponents are equal. So n is equal to 2. Now logs are kind of the same way. If we can find that the log of one thing is equal to log of the other thing, then the argument 1 will equal argument 2. For example, log base 10 of x, if it equals log base 10 of 5, then we can conclude that x is equal to 5. In this case, we also have to think about being able to convert between logarithmic form to exponential form. So here we have a log form here, but we can take this 2, this base 2, raise it to this exponent 3, and that's equal to the argument of the log. This is 2x. So we can then say that 8 is equal to 2x, and that means that x is equal to 4. Here's another example of finding a common base. We have 4, exponent 3x plus 2, and this 64 can be written as 4 cubed. Now we have the same base, 3x plus 2 is equal to 3, 3x is equal to 1, x is equal to 1 third. You may have in some cases a quadratic to solve. You have log base 6 of x plus log base 6 of x plus 1. Remember the addition rule of logs is that this addition of logs here is the log of the product of the argument. So this is log base 6 of x times x plus 1. Now we have one log equaling a number. We can convert. Here this is 6 to the 1 is equal to x squared plus x. Now we can use our rules of quadratics. So I continue to solve. This is x squared plus x minus 6 is equal to 0. And we have our two solutions, x plus 3, x minus 2. We have x equaling 2, we have x equaling negative 3, but notice that one of these doesn't work. This one is an extraneous solution. Here, it doesn't work in this domain. If x was negative 3, this whole argument would be negative, and we can't allow that. Okay, hopefully you have enough to help you review, and good luck.